Right, when modelling uh, a projectile motion, we have to actually uh, think of several things that has to be satisfied for this to happen. First of all, the projectile must be just a particle. Secondly, it must have not any power affecting it anyway. And thirdly, that we have no air resistance affecting its, uh, its motion. Okay. In two dimensions, the only one force that will act on a, a projectile will be the force of gravity, which will be, uh, in this case, minus 9.8 meters per second squared, and it also acts vertically downwards. So if we draw an axis where the axis, the horizontal distance is x and the vertical distance is y, if we throw a particle at, say, 30 degrees, okay, so we have 30 degrees, then we can think of the initial velocity being in two components. The first one will be 20 cos 30 degrees, which is this distance here, this red vector here, and the vertical component will be 20 sine 30. Now, for, for velocity components, we need to think of the uh, equation of motion V is equal to U plus AT. Now, in the case of the horizontal uh, movement, velocity, there is no acceleration, that gravity is not acting on it, so therefore it will just be the initial velocity that you set it off on, which is 20 cos 30 in this case. But in the vertical velocity, gravity actually acts upon it, okay, so this will be u plus at, so the initial, the initial uh, velocity will be 20 sine 30, but then you would have to take away minus 9.8 because the gravity is downwards, so negative is downwards, times some time in seconds. Okay, so we get two components. Uh, the Vx is u cos alpha degrees, and Vy, the vertical velocity, will be u sine alpha minus 9.8 times t. So, using s is equal to u t plus a half a t squared, then we get, we're going to get that x is going to be 20 cos 30, well, this 30 because it's initial uh, angle, 20 cos 30 times t. There is no accelera acceleration in the uh, horizontal component, therefore a is equal to zero, as it says down here, but the vertical one will be 20 sine 30 times the t, minus a half of the gravity, so half of 9.8 is 4.9 t squared. So we're using these two components here, u cos alpha degrees t for horizontal component, and the vertical component will be u sine alpha degrees t minus 4.9 t squared. So if we move the angle, so I change the angle to be something like 60 degrees, Okay, so my initial, my initial, my initial velocity components are 20 cos 60, and the vertical one will be 20 sine 60 minus 9.8 times 0. If we move it through time, then we will see that the particle will actually create a parabola, so parabolic motion here. Okay, and we will go back, and somewhere it will hit the axis here. Now, there are certain things that we can now actually find by doing this. One thing we can find is the range of the flight, which is from here to here. Now, we can find the range of flight by putting the vertical component of the position equal to zero. Here, the vertical component is actually equal to zero, and then find the value of t that that happens at. Okay, in this case it's going to be t is equal to 3.54. So we can actually find the time for the range of the flight, okay, and also the, the, the maximum time of the flight, okay. The, the distance, the actual distance travelled will just be, uh, when we've got our value of t, we just to put it in this one here, so we've got 3.54 and multiply by 20 cos 60, we can actually get the actual distance from here to here. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat. If you want to find the time and range of flight, the time of the flight, you put the vertical component of the position 
equal to zero, like we have done here, and then take that value of t and put it in the horizontal component, and that will give you the actual distance travelled. If I wanted to find the maximum time of the flight, so move p back, okay, for that I have to look at the velocity components. So I don't, that's good. Okay. So I just need to do this a little bit. Okay, so I need to put that equal to zero here. So there is the maximum time of flight. So what I do is I need to put uh, the vertical component of the velocity equal to zero, find the value of t, find, find the value of t that that happens at by, by rearranging. If I want to find the maximum height, I want to find the maximum height, then I take that value of t and I would have to put it into this one here, the, the position, and that would actually give me the height. Okay, so what we get is a par par parabola here of motion. And if, I, if, if, obviously, the steeper the angle, so let's make the angle a bit steeper. Oh, sorry, let's just... Let's put the t back down to zero. Sorry. Get rid of those dots. Okay, so if I want to change the angle here, I can change the angle to this 70, and now do the, the flight like that. Okay, you can see the flight like that. And if I now change the angle to a different one, so something down like down here. We'll get this one here. Get this par parabola here. If I want to find the uh, what would be the maximum range, then that will normally happen when this is 45 degrees. That will give you the maximum range. Okay. So this applet is underneath this video for you to have a play with as well. Okay, so there's been a video to show you the introduction of uh, motion of a particle and looking at the equations for the projectile motion.